Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church, and today we're talking about the Eucharist, specifically, what the Eucharist actually is. This is a drawing of the Eucharist as it appears in physical form. You'll often hear this shape referred to as bread, even though it's not shaped like the breads that we're typically familiar with. This is because before it becomes the Eucharist, it's made of bread. The same is true of the contents of the cup. Before it becomes the Eucharist, it's made of wine. However, after the bread and wine are consecrated, they become something completely different. They still look, taste, and react like bread and wine, but they're actually not. Instead, they become the actual body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ under the appearance of bread and wine. This change takes place at the moment when the priest, at Holy Mass, says the words, This is my body, and this is my blood, or the equivalent of those words in some other language. This is one of the most incredible mysteries of the Catholic Church, and it's on this belief that one's devotion to Catholicism and the truth is tested. How is it that something that looks like just an unleavened wafer and a chalice full of wine are actually the body and blood of God himself? This is explained through a process called transubstantiation. This is the model that the Catholic Church uses to explain how the Eucharist can be Jesus and still look to all appearances like bread and wine. However, in order to understand transubstantiation, it's important to understand the difference between the substance of something and its accidents. In old philosophy, a distinction was drawn between the substance of a thing and the accidents of that thing. The word substance, when these philosophers used it, meant the real core nature of something, what it actually is. For example, even when you change the lighting in the room so that a piece of cheese looks like a block of marble, it still has the substance of being cheese. The word accidents, according to the philosophers, didn't mean mistakes. Instead, it meant things that are part of something, but aren't necessary to make it what it is. For example, I am me. I'm also about average height for my age. If I were a foot shorter, would I still be me? Sure. If I were a foot taller, would I still be me? Absolutely. If I get a year older, will I still be who I am? Of course. That's because my age, my height, my weight, build, hair color, eye color, shape, appearance, and so forth aren't essential to who I am. They can change, and I'm still the same person. Philosophers, therefore, would refer to all of these as accidents, because they're not needed in order for me to be who I am. In transubstantiation, God performs a miracle where the substance of the bread and wine change to become the body of Christ, but all of the accidents remain the same. That's the explanation for how it's possible for the Eucharist to actually be God, even though it still looks like wafers and wine. This does not, however, mean that there are many of Jesus, just because there are many pieces of the Eucharist, or many drops of liquid in the chalice that once contained wine. These are not pieces of Jesus, nor are they different Jesuses. Each has the full presence of Jesus, no matter how little there may be. But this is done without the body of Jesus being multiplied or reduced. Jesus' body, being the body of God himself, isn't bound by the same limits as ours in these ways. So when the Eucharist is spread out in many hosts, the things that used to be wafers, the presence of our Lord's body is multiplied, but his body itself isn't. Finally, the consecration. This miracle that changed the bread and wine into the actual body and blood of Jesus can't just be performed by anyone. It needs to be specifically performed by a priest, or else no consecration and no miracle takes place. Remember, God only performs miracles for those he specifically chooses. There are numerous passages in scripture to this effect, but I think some of the most direct are the fate of Kor, spelled Korah in some translations, in Numbers chapter 16, and what happened to the seven sons of Siva in the Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. Both of these chapters show the kinds of misfortunes that happen to someone when they insist that they can do the same things that the chosen of God have been specifically designated to do. Some will say that God assigns certain people to consecrate the Eucharist in order to prevent the chaos that would result if every heretic and sinner were allowed to call upon this miracle, no matter what their motives. But due to the fact that all the major heresies have gotten their start through ordained priests, this is not a very good answer. 
The real reason why only a priest can consecrate the Eucharist is that that's the purpose of the priesthood. It's what God has ordained for the priest to do. Priests are ordained to consecrate the Eucharist at every Holy Mass, which will bring us into the next episode's topic. Next time, what is the Holy Mass? What goes into a Mass, and what are the main parts of this most sacred celebration of the Eucharist? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.